Are you doing your own thing, hustling as a solo hairstylist? If you do hair and are working for yourself and want to know the best formula for reaching success in your business, stick around because today we're going to be talking all about how to become a successful hairstylist when you're the boss. Hey, I'm Madison. And first I'm going to dive into the fact that even though we are hairstylists, the business that we are actually in is the business of marketing and what that means for you as our industry continues to evolve. Then we'll cover one of the best practices that you need to start implementing in your business right now if you want to stay up to date with trends and find solutions to any problem that may pop up for you in your business. And last, I'm going to touch on the importance of content marketing and share with you two things that you are going to need if you want to see any results from your efforts in this area of your business. So let's get started. As hairstylists, what we do best is make our clients feel beautiful and provide them with some extremely gorgeous hair. And although this is the case, the business that we're actually in is most definitely the business of marketing. When you're in charge of running your own business, you need to figure out a way to grow. And the number one way that we will continue to see other entrepreneurs doing this throughout 2022 is through content marketing. Now, marketing is a whole entire job on its own. So the more that you can learn about it and implement and experiment with different strategies, the more successful you're gonna be. It's important to look at this as a marathon instead of a sprint, because the results of marketing is not something that is going to happen for you overnight. It's something that you're going to have to continue to build out and always adjust. And in the age of technology, things are moving super fast and are constantly changing. That's why I think that the first way to become a successful hairstylist when you're the boss is first and foremost, continual education. And when I say that, I'm not just referring to the technical side of education. I'm actually referring a great deal to the business end of education. The more that you can learn about website building, SEO, analytics, systems, and social media marketing on a consistent basis, the more successful that you will be. I recommend using a goal setting strategy and mapping out a plan as to what you are committed to learning and implementing. You can plan this out by the month, the quarter, or even annually, but actually making a commitment is the key for this one. We are self-employed and the way we keep ourselves employed is by staying up to date and doing the research that our clients need to know and constantly renewing our passion for our craft. We have to train our brain to always remember that. So what about you? Are you good about making sure to continue to learn and take classes throughout the year? What was the last class that you took? Let me know in the comments below. So nowadays when problems pop up, I'm noticing how many people don't actually have the wherewithal to figure out a way to solve their own problems. And this is a huge one for me because being resourceful is one of the requirements of any successful beauty preneur. And the opposite of resourcefulness, in my opinion, is really this victim type mentality that will ultimately end up weeding out the weak, which is why I think so many hairstylists just end up giving up and accepting defeat within our industry. As business owners, it's our job to be problem solvers. We have to be self-reliant because there's nobody to blame if things don't go right for us in our business. And not only that, but trends are constantly changing too. And if we don't intentionally carve out time, look for solutions and ways to keep our clients happy, we're doomed. Which brings me to the second way that you can become successful as a hairstylist when you're the boss. And that would be research. When a problem arises, that's our sign that it's time to spend time to research the best possible solution to fix it. I recommend actually scheduling this task into your weekly schedule 
try dedicating at least like one hour a week where you can sit down and just research. And if you're thinking, well, Madison, I don't really have any problems. Well, then just research how you can improve and make better different aspects in your business right now. And so again, researching different problems you face or even just strategies that you can implement into your business should be a habit that you are incorporating into your weekly schedule no matter what. Oh yeah, and don't forget, I'd also schedule in some time to actually implement your research solutions as well. Because after all, what good is is doing the research if you're never going to implement any of your newly discovered solutions? And before I forget, if you're interested in learning how you can build a successful and sustainable business as an independent hairstylist, make sure that you're subscribed to my channel and don't for forget to click that link at the bottom of the screen to make sure that you're notified every single time I release a new video just like this one. Okay, so now I wanna to talk to you about a topic which I know brings major stress and anxiety to me personally, and I'd be willing to bet it does to you as well. And that would be content marketing. And in order to become successful as a hairstylist, when you're the boss, you're going to need two things. You're gonna need a content plan, and you're gonna need to stay consistent. So much can go into creating a content plan, especially with as many platforms as there are out there. But that's why I really recommend sticking with one platform and building it up with consistency and seeing the results that you want for focusing on any others. A way to do this is to set some ROI goals. And ROI stands for return on investment. And it can be a little tricky to try to gauge a return on investment when it comes to your social media marketing alone. One strategy that I recommend is to first look at your business and decide what forms of content are you going to put out there so you can find a way to make them all work together. The main ones that I recommend when it comes to promoting yourself is a newsletter to nurture and send promotions to your existing clientele, video, because video is dominating right now, and I really don't see that going away anytime soon. And in fact, Adam Mossery, the head of Instagram, recently just announced that Instagram is no longer a photo sharing app. Mossery said that the company is looking to lean into entertainment and video after seeing the success of competitors like TikTok and YouTube. Hey everyone. I thought it would be good to start sharing more about what we're currently working on internally at Instagram, just to give you a sense of what's coming before it comes. The first is creators. The second is video. Video is driving an immense amount of growth online from all the major platforms right now. And it's one that I think we need to lean into more. And I'm gonna actually talk about that more in a minute. The third is shopping. And the fourth is messaging. But today I actually wanna talk a bit more about video. And I wanna start by saying, we're no longer a photo sharing app or a square photo sharing app. The other good idea when it comes to content marketing is creating a blog. Blog posts are great because they can really improve your social media efforts. When you align blogging with your social media strategy, make it easier to engage with your followers and build real relationships. The more engaged followers become, the more they'll interact with your business. And if you're one of those who still don't believe in the magic of blogging, here's a few important statistics you need to keep in mind. Among the existing 1.7 billion websites in the internet, 600 million of them have their respective blogs. Why? Because according to a study done by HubSpot this year, more than half of marketers list blogging as their top inbound marketing priority, with at least 70% of them heavily invested in content marketing. Another survey conducted by SEM Rush states that eight out of 10 marketers produce blog posts to meet their marketing goals. The numbers show that blogging is not just a fad. As a matter of fact, it seems like it's here to stay. A 2019 report from Demand Generation Marketing revealed that six out of 10 buyers see value in reading blogs at the start of their purchasing journey. And then last but not least, your social media posts. One major benefit of creating a strong presence on social media is the fact that it enhances brand loyalty. 
It allows you to engage followers and attract attention to your products and services. Once you grow your following, you will find that customers become very loyal to your brand. In fact, 49% of consumers surveyed said social media posts made by friends influenced their decisions to purchase. And furthermore, the study found that 30% of consumer purchases are influenced by the brands that they follow. And if you can figure out a way to make them all work together, that will make your marketing strategy a whole lot easier. If you feel super stressed out when it comes to content marketing, you are in luck. I have linked a free PDF below to help you in this area. It's called a hairstylist guide to posting amazing content all the time. And this will walk you through a streamlined way to manage your content. And this does heavily focus on video content marketing, which I think will be super helpful for some of you. So feel free to grab that from the description box below. So those are my best tips on how you can become successful when you're the boss. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up and thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you on the next one. Bye.